Welcome to Comsverse. I uh, hope you're having a great conference. This session is called Productivity in an Age of Collaboration by Adam Adley and uh, will be presented to you live right now. Take it away, Alan. Thanks, Chirag. So welcome to Comsverse. So hopefully you have had a good day, good start, and you're going to be here for the duration. So this is a session around productivity. Um, I have lots to cover in this, so I'm going to fly through it um, and then hopefully we'll have questions at the end or I'll be in the, the chat room afterwards to answer any questions. So first up, a uh, big thank you to the sponsors. I know the organizers have put in a lot of effort to try and make this work um, based on the it being virtual rather than online uh, rather than in person. So please go and have a look at some of the uh, the channels for the different sponsors. So a little bit about me. Um, so I'm an Office MVP, uh, Office 365. I also um, take part in a uh, podcast, Grey Hat Beard, um, and run the, the London Power Platform user group. Um, I'm head of modern workplace at CPS and UK consultancy. Um, and a lot of these lessons, these tips are from my experience working with clients uh, and also working internally. So what I'm going to cover, I'm going to go through a bit about the problem. You know, what is productivity? Uh, how, do, how does it affect me? How do I collaborate? How can I focus on some key takeaways? So productivity isn't increasing. It's a big challenge. Uh, most of the time, you know, the UK productivity is being measured and it isn't growing. Uh, it's interesting in that, um, that chart on the right hand side, about the time the iPhone was released, our productivity seems to have plummeted. Can't imagine why that would be. Um, but I guess productivity in the workplace is, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a conflict for most of us because most of us have to communicate with people um, and we have to focus on things. So we need to actually get things done. And, you know, if you're working in an office, then these two things might be expectations for you, but they might directly contradict um, each other. So, you know, what are we actually trying to do? Our expectations based on who we are uh, and what our job role is cover a lot of different things. So we might be expected to be answering emails. Um, you know, how fast you answer an email is one thing, um, but actually, you know, do you have to um, answer emails straight away? Do you do you have time to digest it? How much effort is involved? There's a lot of things just around email that mean that we've got to actually take some time around it. We also have things like meetings. You know, do we are we prepared for meetings? How many meetings do we have? Um, are they back to back? Do you get a chance between those meetings um, to do things? You know, in some organizations, you might be expected to be accessible all the time, you know, to be able to respond to things all of the time, to be able to um, pick up the phone, answer um, questions straight away. Um, and most of us have multiple tools that we might be using. So, you know, that might be, you know, we're using Teams an awful lot now, but it might be that you've got WhatsApp, you might have telephones, email, all of these are different tools. Um, all of that's around communication, but we also, we have to be focused. We have to actually produce things. You know, there's no point in us just answering emails and attending meetings. Ten, we tend to have to actually do things as well. So maybe that's writing a document. Maybe it's reading a document and preparing. It's understanding things, being able to solve problems, being able to answer questions. Um, so all of these are things that we might be expected to do in our day to day job they are mutually exclusive. We cannot do all of those things all at the same time. So let's just take an example. Um, maybe a question that's familiar. Um, you know, what is the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything? Well, thought about it thoroughly and it's 42, but that took seven and a half million years to work out. Just imagine how much longer it would have taken if you had email to think about, Twitter, Facebook, Teams. It may have taken significantly longer uh, to come to that conclusion than, you know, the seven and a half million years that it took. So it's just, I mean, it's, a, it's an example of how we might think about what we are trying to achieve 
um, within the time that we have available to us. So how does this affect you on an individual basis? Well, if you do think about what you need to do, um, you know, you think about email, you think about, you know, who do you work with? How does that change how you respond? You know, if it's an external email, do you have to change the way you respond to it, the speed with which you respond to it? Uh, if it's your boss, does that impact how long you have to uh, respond? You know, meetings, uh, it's a great example of how you might need to prepare for a meeting. You might need to actually carry out actions within a meeting. And then inevitably there may be some follow up unless you're privileged enough just to be sitting and making decisions. Um, you know, you tend to have to put some effort into meetings if they're going to be successful. And then most of us have tasks as well. So, you know, how you manage those tasks, whether they're how they're allocated to you, you know, are they tasks you write down on a piece of paper or are they tasks that are scheduled to you by a project manager or maybe they just come up in verbal conversations or through emails. So how you manage those tasks can be really important as well. And then when you do have to concentrate, you know, what do you have to focus on? How do you focus on those? You know, what tasks require more focus? Um, how long are they going to take? Do you have to estimate that and put time aside to actually focus on them? And how do you ensure that all of those tasks get done? Um, there are going to always going to be challenges for all of us when we have maybe more tasks than we can actually do in the time that's available. And especially when we've got communication to do as well. Um, so, you know, all in all, it comes down to how do we work with colleagues? How do we actually engage with them? Do we use the phone? Do we use email? Do we use Teams? All of these are questions that affect how each and every one of us actually delivers on our job. So I wanted to call out just a few of the maybe the, the tools that we do have at our disposal. And, you know, Microsoft have been very generous in, in most cases. They never give us one thing to use. They give us lots of things to use. And then we have external things as well. So, you know, if you've got a social profile, then maybe Twitter and Facebook, WhatsApp, you know, all of these other tools are things that you may have to be on top of, um, maybe as part of a, a professional profile, maybe as part of your job. So all of these are tools and they all take their own time and their own effort from us to actually focus on and to actually address what's in them um, and respond. So thinking about that, I guess one of the first things that we might want to know is a bit about how we are using these tools. So one of the tools that's really useful for this is something called My Analytics. So this is part of Office 365 um, and essentially what this tries to do is it tries to give us some insights into how we work. So it, it hooks into your Office 365 account and it will try and break down information around how you work based on focus, well-being, collaboration and network. Now, one of the really useful things about this is that it can actually be proactive as well as reactive. So rather than just providing information to you, um, you can actually configure it and you can say when you work, uh, what your start time and end time is, um, and then it can actually um, schedule time in for you. So it can actually automatically try and schedule focus time for you. And what focus time is in this case is time when you're essentially booking it out in your calendar so that nothing else gets booked over it, where you can genuinely focus and concentrate on something. So when you look at the reports that it comes back for um, with focus, it will tell you how many days you had time booked to focus and this is really based on the premise that you need to be able to put aside time to get one activity done um, and so therefore you should be booking time out to do that and that's a good practice to be able to say actually I'm not going to communicate I'm going to focus within this time and you've got that book now button um, so it can actually automatically book time or you can actually go in and manually book time for you and when it does that booking of time it will allow that time to be set aside specifically as focus time, meaning that the uh, teams will go on do not disturb. It will flag your status as focusing um, and it will give you suggestions. So my, my analytics will give you suggestions on lots of things. So plan your week. Uh, you know, it says there my calendar for the upcoming week is usually fills up by Thursday. 
that allows me to set expectations with my peers as to when they need to be planning to book meetings in so that maybe they don't actually book them all in at the last minute. One element of, of my analytics is well-being. You know, this is really, we all need downtime. We need some time when we're maybe not looking at email, not working, uh, and th that's what this tries to do. It tries to measure how much we're spending time on doing things, and therefore how much time we actually have some downtime and some availability just to get our heads in a place where we can relax a little bit. Um, the network, it's really useful to see who you actually engage with. It can tell you how fast you engage, how much you engage, what the response times are, all sorts of interesting metrics um, to say how you engage with your peers. And then the collaboration piece is really interesting. So it really gives you the amount of time that you are spending doing things. So whether you've got online meetings, whether your meetings are actually productive, you know, how many of them have high attendance, how many of them um, last too long, how many of them do people ignore? It's got all sorts of information to say how effective your collaboration is in terms of how you're meeting with people. So first step, have a look at my analytics. It's up there in the waffle uh, in Office 365. Have a look at it, see what it says about the way you work and the way that you engage. It does have suggestions. Have a look through those suggestions. They do come from um, proven psychology to say how we should be working and what works better for us. So the other element that maybe is less well known is Cortana. Now Cortana uh, now has a, a website called calendar.help. And if you go to calendar.help and you log in with your Office 365 account, it gives you some interesting capabilities. So this is really where it's trying to analyze your calendar and to allow you to be a little bit more dynamic in the way that you work and maybe the way that you schedule things as well. So one of the things that it will allow us to do is to set up when we want to have preferred meeting times uh, and what our lunch time is. So we can actually book that time and essentially that restricts the time when Cortana will try and book meetings for you. So, and that's what those those options are underneath schedule. Focus time, lunch meeting, coffee. It will try and book meetings for you. So if you click on one of those, it will actually open up um, Outlook and it will address it to Cortana at calendar.help. And based on what you put into the, um, the body of the email, it will actually try and schedule time for you. So the one that I use a lot here is the one-to-one. -one. Now, sometimes you book a recurring meeting in and it will clash with things and you know if you're trying to book uh, it will it will inevitably clash with those irregular meetings what Cortana does is it will look at the upcoming schedule for you and your one-to-one -one or the, the attendees essentially and it will try and find a slot that works for both of you and actually book that in so for me my direct reports we have a one-to-one -one every week but it's a different time every week based on when we are both available and you can do that for coffee, online meetings, drinks, etc. So it's quite an interesting way to actually look at how you schedule time in and it will do the, the focus time. So you can say schedule some time, two hours of focus time each week for me and it will try and do that for you. So it's a different approach to how you actually schedule time and schedule your, your meetings in. The other thing that Cortana has started doing recently, uh, and some of you may have received an email around this, is a daily briefing. So it will send you uh, um, an email and it will say, I've recognized these things in your emails and your email conversations. Are they tasks? Have you done them yet? Yes or no? Uh, and so you can tick them off and say, yes, that's done. It will also identify time that you have remaining in your calendar and say, do you want to book some focus time? And then you can just click book and it will book that time out for you. So again, it's just trying to be a little more proactive around giving you suggestions for things that you need to do um, to manage your time a little bit more effectively. So what are some other ways that we can actually approach um, using our time better? So other than having Cortana try and intelligently work out when we should be doing different things. Um, there are other ways that we can do this. So one of the things that I, I'm a massive fan of is meetings. Um, I'm not really, I, I, I have way too many meetings. So I always try and make sure that those meetings are 
productive. Um, and for me, that means I want to have an agenda. I want to know what is expected of me in terms of preparation. Are there documents that I need to read? Are there, is there information I should be bringing to this meeting? Um, what contribution do you need from me within that meeting? Um, and what follow up is needed afterwards? You know, a lot of meetings, decisions will be made um, and when decisions are made, they tend to be allocated to people. So therefore you need to know what, what is expected of you after that meeting. So I automate some of this. I use Flow to actually have a, a process that sends out an email back to a, a meeting invite. If it doesn't have an agenda, and I will tentatively accept it and send out some advice saying, yes, please put an agenda in or the meeting will be um, cancelled. I will decline the meeting if you don't put an agenda in. It's a little harsh, um, but it does seem to work pretty effectively. And then if you're in a meeting, how do you keep focus? How do you make sure everybody is actually making the most of that time together? So sharing screens, you know, even if it's just putting the agenda up, use whiteboards to engage with people. Make sure people have video on um, so that again, it's more engagement and keep meetings as short as possible. You know, you can use Outlook to um, reduce the length of meetings by five minutes just so that you've always got that that five minute break between meetings. But it's really important to keep focused within meetings so that you are using that time where you maybe have, you know, a lot of people in one place. Um, you're taking time out of their day. Respect their time. Make sure that the time is going to be used productively. So general question to the world, would it be rude not to accept meetings without clear expectations? As I say, I automate it now because I think it's acceptable. Um, and you know, if you don't know what you need from me, then maybe you need to plan that before you actually book in a meeting. Just a point on that, I don't decline client meetings and external meetings based on that. That's an internal expectation so that I can communicate it to, to my colleagues and peers. So another area that I like to set expectations around is email. So one of the things around email is I think it's a, a reactive uh, communication form. I'm a, I don't keep checking my email. If I had to check my email all the time, I wouldn't actually get anything done. So I don't check my email, but I make sure I set expectations around that. Set expectations using a signature. So my signature says that, you know, I will respond to an email within 48 hours. Um, I work in an organization. We don't have a, a corporate guideline for how you respond to emails. I think there are very few organizations that do. So I set my own um, response time and my own expectation. But what I also do is, again, I use Flow. I've got a Flow uh, set up that will actually take a flagged email and it will prioritize it. So if you flag it as important, it will flag it, put it into a folder. Now, if I flag that email, it goes into to Microsoft to do for me. So that's a really important element is that I do use to do extensively for this. Um, but because I've got that in my signature, everybody should know. So people do send emails back to me and they do flag them as important. And then I get a notification that there is something that I need to do. Um, I also set advanced notifications around things like being on annual leave. Um, so I want people to know that I'm going to be out. I don't want them to suddenly need me when I'm not there. So I set expectations that I'm going to be out. I also then use out of offices to actually say, actually, I'm not going to be able to respond to you. Now, I do it less now, but certainly when I used to go on client sites and have workshops where I knew that I was going to be unable to, to re respond, I would set an out of office for that. So out of office can be really, really useful to actually set expectations for when you are going to respond to email. Now, obviously email is also something that maybe a lot of people are trying to use less of because they're using Teams more. So, you know, if you're trying to do that, then setting these expectations around how you use email, um, you know, it can be really useful. Um, respect other people. I, there's a really nice way to, to know who needs to be in the two uh, for an email. Don't put anybody into it, but mention people who need to actually do something. If they need to read something, if there's an action for them, at them. Put them in as an at, and then their name will go into that to field. And then CC people for info. Again, 
I think it's a growing trend that people are not looking at CCs um, because they have maybe too much email. So consider that when you're actually putting people in to either the to field or the CC field. Do they need to read the email or is it just for information? Um, I do work at odd hours at times, so I only send uh, emails in office hours. I use the delay send a lot and I also have that in my signature to say, you know, I might have responded to you at a, an odd time. Don't feel obliged to reply. I want to set expectations that I live by so that people don't respond when it's not their working time. Now, if you do, you do are still going to get email. So, you know, work out how you manage it. So I, I use a a process where I, I will respond if it takes less than five minutes. Um, I will move it to the action folder if it's going to take longer um, and I will flag it so that it's got it shows up in to do so I know I've got an action. Um, if I'm waiting for a response, I'll put it into a waiting folder. If it's something that I need to read at a later date, maybe it's a, a newsletter or something that I want to read, then I'll put it into the read folder. I confess I don't get to that one particularly often, but it's a good practice if I need to go back and find things and then you know, if it's dealt with, I will move it into a file folder. Now, some people will then move it and file it in other places. But what I find is that this keeps my inbox very light. I don't have lots of things waiting for my attention. So therefore, I will actually be able to manage my emails really quite quickly as they come in and deal with them in a way that suits me, which in most cases is putting them into that action folder and flagging them so that they then show up in to do. Now, for me to do is a whole different session. It's a um, fantastic tool. I absolutely live by it because it has my personal tasks in there. It has my team tasks coming through from Planner and it has those flagged emails coming in there as well. And then within there, I can actually prioritize those, all of those tasks together and say, right, this is what I'm going to try and do today. This is what's important to me and I can actually manage them very, very effectively within one tool. As I say, I'm not going to go into to do in detail. That is a whole nother session, um, but it is a, a fantastic tool if you haven't already looked at it. So we know we've got emails, we know we've got tasks, but we've also got Cortana booking focus time. So how do we actually manage that focus time? What what do we do to make it really productive? Now focus is it's an interesting thing. There's three different models that people use. Monastic, so some people will go away and just stay uh, completely isolated. So authors tend to do this when they want to write a book. It's best just to completely isolate. Um, by modal, you know, I might have times when I'm going to just focus on writing a document. So I might say, well, actually, I'm going to take the next three days and just focus and just not do anything else other than that one that one activity. Um, and then we have rhythmic where it might be OK from you know, eight in the morning till 10 in the morning. I'm just going to focus. That's my time. I'm not going to have any meetings there. I'm not going to respond to any emails or any other communication. That's my focus time. So there are different ways to approach it depending on your job role and what you need to actually do. Uh, there are very much different ways that you can actually respond um, to others, allowing you to carry on communicating um, as well as just staying isolated from people. So different ways to think about it. Now, one thing to remember is that, you know, focus is like a muscle. We can only focus for a finite amount of time. I can't work, um, you know, in deep thought, really focusing for 10 hours straight. I'm not going to be able to do that unless I practice it. Um, and so therefore, Starting with two hours at a time, going up to three hours, four hours, that works well. Um, but remember that switching focus takes effort. Um, so, you know, I always I've run teams of developers for many years and it always amuses me when they say, oh, that'll just take five minutes. Nothing just takes five minutes because you have to stop what you're doing. You have to remember where you are in whatever activity you're doing and then you need to change your context into something else and then work out where you're supposed to be in that, carry out your five minute task and then go back, put that down and then go back to your other activity. So switching focus is actually takes quite a lot of time. So planning what you're going to focus on is actually a really good thing to be able to do. 
So if we know that switching focus takes um, time and effort, then one of the things we have to do is to remove distractions. So if you're using uh, Windows, then you can turn your machine to be in focus assist mode, uh, which will remove all of the pop ups. Um, in Outlook, you can disable those notifications and sounds. I strongly recommend this for everybody. You know, do not have Outlook popping up every time uh, you receive a new email. And in Teams, you can use in that search bar at the top, you can put slash DND and it will change you to do not disturb. Um, which again is a really useful way just to remove further distractions. If you still use a phone, uh, I know I've got a couple sat next to me. Um, I had to use it recently. It was quite an alien experience not using Teams, but just think about how you use a phone. I only use mine for, for social media. Turn it up over uh, so that it's face down, uh, turn it to silent, put it out of sight. You know, all of these, if you're going to focus, you don't want the phone popping up with all of those WhatsApp messages either. And in the same way that we can use signatures uh, in email, we can also put a status message into um, Teams as well. So put status message in saying, you know, I'm going to set myself to do not disturb. Maybe I'm out of office, but I can also just say I'm focusing. So leave me alone. I will finish this in a day or so. So you can set expectation and manage expectation uh, within Teams as well. Now, we've got no distractions. We've got our focus time um, sorted out. So maybe we've got two hours, maybe we've got four hours, maybe we've got three days. One of the tools that I like to use is the Pomodoro technique. Uh, now this is a really, I find this a really useful way to actually focus on getting something done. Uh, and the way this works is, uh, it's based on a Pomodoro timer um, and the person who invented it, that's how they got started with it. You set a timer for 45 minutes or 40 minutes, however long you want, and you set yourself a task to do within that period of time. And that's all you do. So it might be, I'm going to check my emails and process them. I'm going to write a document. I'm going to uh, review my tasks that I need to do and prioritize them and set myself up for the day. All of those are valid things to be doing um, during a Pomodoro. Now, the emphasis on the Pomodoro is that you do that time, you do that 45 minutes or 40 minutes, and then you take a short break. Now, this is because that focus is a muscle. So you're, you're focusing and then you're taking a break and then you're focusing and then you're taking a break and you carry on with that routine. And then at the end of usually about four, you'd have a longer break. And um, what this does is it means that you can really focus on doing one thing at a time, um, but you've still got those little breaks when you can check your important emails, you can check your phone, you can go on Facebook, just turn off a bit for five minutes and then you focus again. And you're not changing your context for focus, you're just using your focus muscle more effectively. Some of the tools um, will integrate with Todo, which means you can bring some of those tasks into it, um, and the apps certainly help. So I would certainly say look at the apps that are available uh, because they will remind you when your time is up. So I think that's that's a really useful way to to focus uh, and to to manage your time when you are working on something that needs that concentration. Just a quick word on music. So I listen to a lot of music when I'm working um, and you can tell what I'm working on by the music that I'm listening to. Um, so if you think about it, we've removed all of our distractions. Listening to brand new music um, will distract you if it catches your ear and you like it or the lyrics catch your ear. Uh, so think about what music you might listen to. Familiar music requires a lot less attention, um, so you will stay more focused on what you're doing based on familiar music being played. Words require a bit more attention. Um, so, you know, if you're listening to a, a new song and it's got really interesting lyrics, you're more likely to be distracted by the words. So just think about what you might be listening to in terms of music um, when you're actually working through your Pomodoros during your focus time. So some key takeaways for this. Um, plan your time. Work out when you can work, when you can focus, when do you need to collaborate? So I, I look at my week and I 
try and get all my meetings on Mondays and Fridays. That leaves me the rest of the week when I can start to really try and prioritize my time to write documents, to do workshops, to focus on working with clients. So manage your time, plan your time, set expectations with your peers so that they understand um, how you're working with your week. Um, when you are trying to work, try and reduce distractions. Um, I don't turn distract the the messages and the notifications on and off, I leave them off all the time. Um, and you'll get into a routine of working with them, especially if you're using Pomodoros to then actually check those those distractions, those e the email, Twitter, you know, you can use the Pomodoros effectively to allow you to actually stay on top of those things as well. Manage expectations, let people know what you're expecting of them when it comes to booking meetings in your calendar, when it comes to responding to emails, responding in teams, make sure that people understand what you, you expect of them so that they can actually get the most out of you. And configure your tools, you know, make sure that you use the tools that you have at your disposal to support your way of working. If you're in teams most of the time, make sure you know how to switch do not disturb on and off. Make sure you've got a status message in there so that people understand what you're doing. If you live in email, make sure people understand how, how you're going to respond. If you don't live in email, it's even more important that people understand that maybe that's not your primary tool and maybe there are better ways to contact you. So manage expectations with all of your peers so that they understand how you are going to work, how they can get the best out of you and how you've configured the tools that you have. Now, I know I've flown through a lot of that. There's a lot of information in there. Um, a lot of this comes from um, well-known, well-proven psychology. So there's some really good books that you can, to, can look through um, to actually understand a bit more in detail around some of the psychology around these things. Um, certainly Cal Newport, um, he wrote a book called Deep Work. A lot of the findings that he had in his research are being used to drive things like my analytics. Um, so have a look through some of this. It will give you more insight. And remember, all of this is really based around how you work, what your job role is, what you actually need to deliver. So tailor it to yourself. And importantly, remember, uh, you can need to turn off when you're finished. You can't just be thinking about work all the time. So turn everything off when you're finished. And with that, uh, I will check and see if there are any questions and I will be going over to the breakout team uh, as well. So, but are there any questions at the moment? Thanks, uh, Alan. Um, yes, we have got one question. Um, I'll run that up to you. Uh, it's a question from Brian. Is calendar.help, uh, which has been in exclusive preview since before Ignite 2019, any idea when this will be in public preview? Um, I believe it. you can sign up for it. Um, it's, it's not a private preview that's re restricted. Um, so you should just be able to sign in to calendar.help with your Office 365 account. Um, OK, so, so yeah, you should be able to do that now. OK, that's great. Thanks, Alan. Um, and if there's any questions, uh, please feel free to do so. We still have another 10 minutes. Um, uh, so I'll, we'll kind of give you uh, a minute or two uh, to have your questions queuing up so Alan can answer them as, as much as possible to them. But like uh, Alan said that, you know, if you do think of something afterwards, then, uh, you know, there'll be a breakout room where you can actually um, fill that out uh, to Alan. I think Alan, that's um, we have got no more questions. So, okay. Well, in that case, thank you very much, and I will uh, drop into the um, the breakout room. Um, and if you do have questions, I'll be in there for a little while. Okay. Right. Well, thanks, and once again, really thanks uh, for giving up your time and being here with us at the Commsverse, and uh, awful lot of content there. So that's great. 
And so, you know, one of the questions that was being asked that, you know, if the slides will be available, yes, it will be available as well as the, the recordings as and when the, the conference gets uh, out of the way. So yeah, everybody, thanks very much for attending Alan's session and enjoy the rest of the conference. Excellent, thank you. Thanks, Alan.